In the weeks leading up to the 1938 season, the VFA made two decisions that would lead to a rebirth of the association. The first was the adoption of the throw pass, and the second was the scrapping of the permit agreement with the VFL that had been in force since 1931. The latter decision, which meant players could move between the two bodies without a clearance, was to have a profound effect on Williamstown in 1940-41 and help build a foundation for an almost non-stop run of success lasting for a quarter of a century. Finishing last in 1938, Williamstown was still able to lure the great Carlton full forward Harry Soapy Valance and a new captain coach Gordon Butchie Ogden in 1939. With the form of outstanding footballers Arthur Cutting, Colin Wilcox and ruckman Eric Tarzan Glass, Williamstown defies the odds and careers from last to premiers in a single season. This sets the scene for the arrival of possibly the greatest player the club will ever see. Stirring crowds with his mighty high marks and remarkable kicks for goal, in both 1938 and 1939, this young man kicked 120 goals as a Collingwood full forward. At the peak of his career, playing with a powerful club, he accepts an offer of top money and moves without a clearance to play at Williamstown. Enter Ron Todd. It was a dramatic event that captured the imagination of not only Williamstown followers, but also the football world at large. Vice President Bill Dooley and Secretary Larry Floyd were the architects of the move, and needless to say, Collingwood were not happy. To add more fuel to the fire between the two clubs, Todd persuades Des Fothergill, who has just won the Brownlow medal, to join Williamstown and the two play alongside each other as Seagulls in 1941. Interrupted by the war, the VFA suspends competition from 1942 to 1945. At war's end, the VFL call an amnesty on all players who had formerly crossed to the VFA. Collingwood were keen to have Todd and Fothergill return and invite both players to a committee meeting prior to the 1945 season. Collingwood mishandled the meeting. Bill Dooley Jr. remembers how it happened. The night that they went there to be interviewed by the committee of the Collingwood Football Club, uh, first they, they welcomed and uh, Father Gill in with open arms because he was a white-haired boy. He was a nice boy and everybody loved him. And he went in and he, in a few minutes he came out. Now, as I understand it, the um, Toddy was outside and they kept him outside waiting and in this time they were, he could hear what was going on in the committee room and I can't, I'm not going to tell you what they were saying but they were debated and, and uh, he, after a, a, a two hours, I think, he got sick of that and he cut up and he walked out and he rang my phone at nine o'clock. And he always, even though Dad wasn't Prez, he, said, he always called him Prez to the day uh, Dad died. Uh, he said, Prez, he said, uh, if you uh, pick me up, he said, they treat me like a little boy here. He said, if you... If you pick me up, I'll resign with Williams now. And Dad went and picked him up, brought him back to... Uh, uh, we had moved from uh, Collins Street to Coy Creek Road, and my mother, my grandmother had died, my mother was the witness to the signature for him to um, rejoin uh, Williams down. And he played there, as you well know, uh, until... Uh, the 1949 Premiership, uh, which Williamstown beat Oakley at the Junction Oval. Collingwood know they had made an error of judgment, further underlined when Todd, playing for Williamstown, 
in a premiership year, kicked a VFA record 188 goals for the 1945 season. Of all the victories, brilliant players and memorable moments that make Williamstown's history such an elaborate pageant, nothing matches the story of Ron Todd. In an ever-changing modern football landscape, it is doubtful Williamstown will ever see the likes of his astonishing capabilities again. Toddy, Williamstown honours your unique, extraordinary talent. You were an absolute beauty.